Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to do what is called layering. Now, why would you want to layer sounds together? And layering is where you really make one sound out of using two different sounds. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, using this bass line as an example, and let's just solo that for a second. So soloing in the arrange window is almost the same as soloing things in the channel rack. If you remember over here, we right click, then we go solo in the arrange window, you literally just right click and then you can see the other tracks have been muted and just this one's playing. So with this bass, I mean, it sounds nice. It's got really nice attributes, but the actual bass part of it, the sort of very low frequencies are kind of really lacking. There's not much of them. It's certainly not filling me with that nice warm bass kind of feeling that you get when you listen to a nice bass line. So what we're going to do is use this as one layer and then we're going to add another layer to the bass playing exactly the same pattern, but that's going to provide all of that nice warm sort of sub bass. Now you can do layering with almost any sound like drums, leads, basses as we're going to do here, and it can help you make bigger, better and more unique sounds. But just a quick caveat before we get going, the more low frequencies, i.e. bass and especially sub bass frequencies that are in a sound, the more you need to be careful when layering sounds together. Now, I'm kind of throwing you in at the deep end here by layering two bass sounds together, but by the end of this lesson, you'll understand the process and you'll be able to layer any bass sounds together that you like. The other sounds, laying drum sounds, lead sounds, are actually a lot easier to do. So I'm just gonna unsolo our bass top again by right-clicking. Uh, just so you know as well, I didn't mention it, but you can just mute a track by left-clicking. just in case you want to, but that's fine. So let's add our other layer. So I want to add another GMS synth. So I'm just gonna come over here and I've still got my synth classic folder open. So I'm just gonna drag in another GMS and I want another bass sound. So I'm gonna click on bases, go to analog one TE. Let's just play that. So nice sound that. Now one small change I'm going to make in the GMS synth is on the decay. If I play it. So at the moment it's very plucky. So I'm just raising it up a little bit, just a bit higher than what it was originally to give it a slightly sort of longer, less punchy kind of feel to it. So we're setting it to 0.39%. And then we can just close the GMS instrument for now. And of course, before we start programming in our bass melody again, what we need to do is create a new pattern. So we come up here, click plus, and I'm gonna rename this bass sub. And I'll color it in our same pinky color so we know it's part of the baseline. Sorry, the red color, I beg your pardon. And click accept and then enter. And now we're in our new bass sub pattern. Actually, I'll quickly just uh, rename this as well. Color it. Accept, enter. And just so you know, if I want to move this up or down, I can just hover over it, hold down the shift key, and then use my mouse wheel to move it up and down. Same applies in the patterns tab as well. So I can hold my shift key and then use my mouse wheel to move that up just so they're all nice and organized. And just for the sake of neatness, let's just do the same in our arrange window. Color it, accept, enter, and then again, shift, and then use my mouse wheel. And it's all neatly organized. So what I want to do, of course, is not program in that whole bass pattern again. I just want to copy this one and then add it to my bass sub pattern. So I'm actually going to go into and edit my bass top pattern. Scroll to the left and then scroll down. And then I can just go Control or Command A to select all. And then what I want to do is copy it. So I hold Control or Command plus C. And then I can close this window. Again, make sure I go to my bass sub pattern and then right click, go to piano roll. And then just to make sure that it pastes it at the right place, I'm just gonna click at the one there. You can't, it doesn't do anything when I click. So I have a click there. And then I'm just gonna go Control V or Command V to paste it in. And then I can close the piano roll editor and I can just draw in my new bass sub layer with its new 
base pattern, or I say new base pattern, our copied base pattern. And I can just hold shift as well and copy that across. So let's just solo our new base sub. And in fact, I'll unsolo that and I'm just gonna mute the lead, mute the drum. So we've got our bass top and our bass sub playing at the same time. So at the moment, it doesn't sound right at all because we've got our new bass sub sound and it's got this kind of growl to it and all sorts. So obviously this isn't working, but the bass sub does have a really nice low end to it. I listen to it on its own and I just listen to the low frequencies part of the sound. So it sounds nice and sort of big and warm. So that's good. I'm just going to unmute our other sounds. And of course, at the moment, it's just going to sound a bit messy. because these two bass sounds aren't working together. So what we need to do is we need to remove all of the high frequencies from the bass sub. So all that growl and just leave the sub bass. And from the bass top, I need to remove any of the very low frequencies. And then they'll sort of combine together. And to do this, we need to jump into the mixer section. So again, we can show our mixer by clicking on that button there. So we're gonna be looking at the mixer in more depth later on at various points in this tutorial. So don't worry if we're kind of glossing over certain things here. What's important to know here is that these numbers in the channel rack, we've got one, two, three, four, and then our other channels haven't been assigned a number again, but as I've mentioned in the previous lesson, we're just assigning these to a mixer channel and just know that wherever the kicks on one. So if I, again, solo, channel one, all you'll hear is the kick. If I solo channel two, we'll just hear the clap, etc. And of course, again, I can mute these if I want. Now at the moment, it all looks a bit confusing as we just got gray tracks and they're not named. So you can, if you really want to select the channel first and then right click, go to rename color icon and you can do it all in there so I could type the kick and change the color to yellow. I'll just right click to sort of cancel that. But there's a much easier way. So if I go to the channel rack and select all of these, then go to my mixer and then from where I want these tracks to go. So I want this to be from channel one because that's the kick. So I go right click, channel routing, and then I want to select root selected channels starting from this track. And there we go. We've got our mixer and it's got all of exactly the same colors and names as what we've already got in our channel rack. So just a nice easy way of transferring the colors over and it means everything now is completely color coded throughout our project. Right, so on to what we're doing, which is layering two sounds together. So we've got our bass top sound, so I'm just gonna select this channel and then over here on the right hand side, we've got our slots or inserts for this particular channel. So I'll just make this a bit smaller so we can see the menu and I click and then I click on slot one and select the fruity parametric EQ2. So all of these insert slots can have different plugins on so it doesn't have to be an EQ like what we're gonna use. It could be like delay or reverb or distortion or something like that. And you can put them all in the order that you want and this will affect just this one channel, just our base top channel. And for example, if I want to add an EQ, which we will eventually, but I'm not gonna do it now, but just for example, if I want to add an EQ to our base sub channel and I click on it, you'll notice that the slots are all empty again. And that's because we're now on the base sub channel and these slots pertain to just to whatever channel is selected. So if I go back to our base top, we can see our fruity parametric EQ2. Okay, so let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. And let's also just solo by right clicking our GMS base top channel. So what you're seeing here with all these red lines and everything and the purple lines is the frequency or more specifically the fundamental harmonics of the sound. We're not going to go into what harmonics are right now. Don't worry about that. But just know wherever you see lines, that's where you've got sound. So an EQ is really like an advanced volume fader. So with a volume fader, 
when you turn it up you're sort of turning all of the frequencies up or down equally with an eq you can actually choose which of those frequencies you want to turn up or down and this enables us to do many things like make sounds brighter for example or you can correct issues with a particular sound by removing certain frequencies And just so you know, once you've moved the point, you can right click and just go reset to put it back to its original position. And in this particular case, we're actually going to remove the low frequencies from this track. Now we don't want to use it as it is. So this is what's called a low shelf. So it's kind of like a, literally a shelf. It goes down to a flat line. We don't want that. We actually want to cut. So we want this curve to sort of continue on down and completely remove the low frequency. So to do that, we just right click the point, go to type, and then we're going to go to high pass. And you can see there, we're actually now cutting all of the low frequencies and only letting the high pass, or sorry, the higher frequencies through, uh, but it's not really steep enough. So again, make sure we've got point one here and just right click, go to order, and we're going to choose steep eight. So it's like the steepest curve that you can possibly have. So let's just play our sound and we're going to cut any low frequencies out. Uh, just bear in mind that when it comes to low frequencies, you really want either a decent pair of studio monitors, as in speakers, or you want a decent pair of headphones. Now, most headphones will be able to produce the low end, so you should be able to hear what I'm doing here. So as you can hear, the further I move it up, the more low frequencies we're removing from the sound. Now we don't want to actually remove all of the low frequencies. Some of it's quite nice. So we want all the sort of mid range body of the sound. We just want to take out any sort of bass sub frequencies. So somewhere about there is, I think, perfect. Don't want to go too far and also don't really want this sort of slow dip here i want to have that more of a almost like a right angle so i'm just going to grab point two now don't worry if this isn't sort of all making amazing sense right now it will eventually don't worry but as you can see all i'm doing now is just sort of making that curve a bit neater And while we're here, let's just brighten up this sound. So I mentioned we could brighten it. So we're going to use 0.7, which is set as a high shelf. And we're just going to give it a bit of a boost. So let's just play it. So I'm just going to bypass this. So that's without any of our processing out of our EQ and then with. So you can hear, we've basically removed any of the sort of sub bass sort of muddy frequencies and we've just brightened it up a bit, might even brighten it up a little bit more. So just copy what I've done there. And for our bass top, that's absolutely fine. Now we need to go to our other layer. So we're gonna close that, go select bass sub in the mixer. And then again, add another fruity parametric EQ2. And again, let's just make this a little bit bigger. And this time we're going to kind of do the opposite. So we're going to cut, but we're going to cut from the high end. Uh, oh, and let's just, just close that for a sec. And I want to unsolo my GMS bass top and solo my bass sub. So I'm only listening to that. And then I can just click on the FL parametric EQ to bring it up. So we can see most of the frequencies are sort of concentrated down the low end here, the sort of more dense colors. So what we want to do is take 0.7, right click, go to type, and we'll go to low pass. And then again, we want to make this quite steep. So we're going to right click it again, go to order, and then steep eight, and let's just play. So 
So we want all that nice bass and sub bass frequency, but only that. Don't want any of this sort of more mid rangey kind of sound. So about there is perfect. Now let's use band two as well, just to make that all a bit uh, more consistent. So somewhere about there is perfect. I hope you can hear that properly, but you do need sort of half decent headphones or speakers to be able to hear it. Uh, so let's just close that and let's now unsolo this. And let's just mute all our other sounds for now because I want to hear just our bass top and our bass sub together. So I'm going to start with just the bass top. So everything is now muted apart from our bass top. And then I'm going to add our bass sub. And you can hear it just adds that warmth to our bass top. Um, so let's just now bring in the rest of our sounds. Okay, so that is how you layer two sounds together or specifically two bass sounds. Like I say, most other sounds are a bit easier than that but you can definitely give yourselves a pat on the back if you manage to follow that all through properly because it's a fairly advanced process layering two sounds together like that. Now, again, don't worry too much if this isn't all sort of sinking in straight away. As you progress through the course and as you work on your own productions, all of this sort of thing will just start to slot into place. It's just one of those things that can take a bit of time for it all to work, but don't worry. It's all good. We're here to guide you and we're going to get you through this and you're going to get making amazing music. Okay, so that's it for the free lessons of this course. I hope you've gotten off to a good start and perhaps that was all you needed to get going in FL Studio, which I'm super happy about. But if you want to finish making this track and learn all about the many aspects of FL Studio and music production, things like side chaining, creating SFX sounds, how to layer sounds together, how to record vocals, how to create tension and release in your mixes, how to arrange your track into a full song, and of course, how to mix it all together so it all sounds nice and professional and many, many more things, then follow the first link in the description and head over to Born to Produce and get the course. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one. Really